just in case you didn't recognize it, that's Joni Mitchell's both sides now. And I have laryngitis, can you tell? So otherwise, I could speak with, to you probably without the microphone. The acoustics are, are wonderful, but I think today I'll, I'll have to rely on the microphone. So please welcome Jim Cooper and Warren Jones. <clears throat> While they're getting set up, which takes all of two seconds, uh, thank you for coming in today on such a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Never know what to expect with turnout. This looks pretty good. Thank you so much for spending an hour or so with us today. Um, really fun. This is the first time um, that I've had uh, vibes instead of piano on one of the concerts. And um, we've been working together a, a little bit recently. And so I hope you enjoy what we've come up with for you today.
Thank you. <laughs> That's uh, 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 all right. Uh, 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 question to the audience. Name of the tune, the composer, anybody? Close, close. Thelonious Monk. Almost. In walked Bud. In walked Bud. <laughs> all right. Um, but yeah, Thelonious Monk, characteristic uh, stuff of his, and it's a lot of fun to play. Um, thrilled to have Jim as a, uh, one of the things I've been enjoying as we've been getting to know each other musically are his compositions. So we're going to play one of his now, and this is called, do you want to say anything about this? Uh, it's called Malice in Wonderland. Yeah, and, and for, thank, thank you, Kent, for that idea. <laughs> Mallets in Wonderland, and if you're familiar with um, Bill Evans' Alice in Wonderland, you may catch a little reference there.
Yeah, thank you. That again is Mallets in Wonderland. And uh, so if you've been to a concert before um, uh, here, one of our Jazz in the Sanctuary concerts, thank you for coming before and being here again today. This is our ninth one, third year, three a year. Um, next year, we're already starting to think about what we're going to do next year. It'll be a little different, but we are con going to continue the series next year. Yes. And... Uh, <laughs> right. Um, but what, what I do at each concert is um, I do ask our guest artists some questions. We call it the little interview. And um, I will also ask you if you have questions for any of us. But, but right now I'm going to start with Jim. Why don't you have some water? Can anybody, anybody get Jim some, some water? Bottle, Thank bottle you. Water? Thank, is Lauren going? Yeah, Thank I you. I really like it if I'm not supposed to <laughs> So are you one of these people who you can play like crazy in front of the audience, but if you have to speak, you get nervous, maybe? So Jim, how did you get into the vibes? I mean, we've been playing together, but I've never asked him that question, so, um, okay. The vibes, I was just very unlucky. Because look, at I have to haul this stuff around with, with me. Do you realize my, my mother, told me, Jim, you should have played flute, you know? But I, so I'm hauling all this stuff, so I'm kind of unlucky in some ways, but I'm very fortunate enough to, um, see, I started out as a, as a drummer, and then I went to piano in college, well, b before that. So I was a, a classical piano major in college for the first two years, so, wow. so um, playing vibes and Marimba is like playing drums and piano at the same time. You have your keyboard the same. So and I had this, this thing going. I used to drive my parents crazy on the Metal Jay's Potato Chips cans back in the 50s, <laughs> if you remember that. So anyway, so it's, I just started playing them in college, okay. actually. It wasn't, it wasn't until college I started playing, playing the violin. I discovered them in a practice room and said, this is for me. Right. I, I remember um, kind of falling in love with the vibes in college, too, and I really wanted to learn to play them, but I never, I never even tried. But there was a time period when I thought, oh, I want to play the vibes. So it's not too late. Well, I, I, I do give lessons. So. <laughs> All right. And, um, uh, and so where was home? I know you used to live in Chicago, but where did you grow up? Uh, sh Chicago, oh. yes. Okay. Southsider, yeah. All right. And now you live in Saugatuck. Yes, just south of there, okay. in beautiful down, uh, the beautiful Fenville. Oh, oh, yep, that's okay. where we, okay. we live. But right along the lake shore, though, so it's nice. Right. And, and where did you go to college? Or did you go to college? How, how, many, how many fingers do I have on one hand? A lot. Because I, I skipped around a lot. Oh, okay. Well, you mentioned a couple of years as a piano major, so. Yeah, that was, that was in junior college back in, um, in Harvey, Illinois. Thornton Junior College, and I was a piano ma major there, and that's where I started to play vibes, too. Right. Uh, and so then I went to Michigan State for one year, and they wanted me to join the marching band, and I said no. <laughs> and so I left, uh, uh, went back to Chicago and learned how to play jazz, really, because I was just starting. I was playing timpani, so I was a, a percussionist. Timpani? Mm -hmm. Oh, I would, uh, now wouldn't that be interesting, a, a, a jazz timpani? <laughs> yeah, you just don't have as many notes as no. you'd like. <laughs> yeah, because Warren says you could play the one-note samba on the timpani. <laughs> yeah, right. That's an idea. We'll have to try it. Good, good idea. Well, let's, let's play another song. Uh, that was uh, one by um, Jim, and we're going to play one of mine now. And it's interesting because for me, writing this piece, it's kind of a pop jazz tune. Some of you probably have heard it. It's called Eddie's Here. And it's interesting to play it without the drums. It seems like it's, it's um, definitely a song with drums, so you can imagine that part of it. But one thing that's, that I really enjoy when we do concerts without drums is it's like we really have to think and, and hear in different ways. And, um, and I certainly can't rely on the drummer then to like, like a metronome. I have to like be even more focused in myself. So this is Eddie's here. <laughs>
Yeah, that's uh, Eddie's here, one of my tunes, and um, from uh, and and, and uh, I wrote in honor of Eddie Russ, who was a well-known jazz pianist in this area a while back, and was my first jazz piano teacher. And Jim, is this? Um, we're gonna play another one by Jim. Is this the one um, that you won the art prize, or did we play that one? I, I haven't won anything with this song yet. Oh, okay. We, I forgot to ask you, but we're not playing your art prize win, are no, we? No. Well, we're not playing mine either. <laughs> a little false advertising. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yeah, we played a concert out in Holland last week, and, and, and Jim made the announcement that we were both art prize winners, and I, I had to interrupt and say, wait a minute, let's set the record straight. Neither one of us won art prize. If you know about art prize, you know that's a, it's a big cash uh, uh, bonus, right? No, it's, it's the music art prize, which is... Still very much appreciated, but nowhere near with the, art, the visual artists. <laughs> anyway, 2015 and then 2016 over here. So who knows, Warren, 2017? Yeah? Got it. Yeah, all right. So here's another one. <laughs> here's another one by Jim called Waiting for Your Smile.
Thank you. Thank you. I have another question for you, Jim. Something I always want to know about somebody who writes music is, how do you do it? <laughs> do you have a process? Do you, is it the <clears throat> muse inspiring you and all this just comes out? No, I mean, well, I know I, I ain't no Mozart. I know that. Because <laughs> I, I really had to really uh, sometimes really fight to c compose. I go through periods where I'm just, I just don't do anything. And then I'll get these spurts, and I just try to take it, advantage of it. But I, I know the more you do it every day, the better it comes. So it's a matter of just getting into that groove. So I, I don't have a process. Like some, some people will write the chords and write a m melody to that. Some people write a melody to the chords, and some people may write all at the same time. And I, I just don't have any plan. It just kind of comes. But it, not, I wish it, I'm working on being more consistent, you know, and I, and well, I let just, me know if you figure that out, because. Yeah. So, but for instance, uh, what I can see, because it's in front of me, is the music you're giving us is uh, obviously computer notation. So do you, um, do you write at a computer or at a piano or just in your head, you know? Uh, I write mostly at, at the piano. Okay. Yeah. And I. Then I'll write out the score first, and then I'll notate it. I'll try it. My software is down now, so I'm kind of in a, a quandary. Wait, what about the software? The, my music writing software just, like, stopped working on me. Oh. Yeah, so now I have to write everything out longhand. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Get yeah. cramps and everything. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, anybody have a question for Jim, or Warren, for that matter? Yes. I know, the spelling. <laughs> Other than that, if they're both the same, they're exactly the same, no. Um, okay, marimba is made out of, well, it's wood, wood bars. There's a, uh, you have the xylophone and the marimba. This is a small marimba or a big xylophone, whichever way you want to look, look at it. And then the, the vibes, it was a, a more modern invention back in the, uh, late 20s so it has metal bars it has a pedal sustained pedal like a piano and it has a motor that spin these little discs where in the summer it really comes in handy because it kind of keeps me cool <laughs> those fans if you come up here afterwards you can see these fans that go on they just <laughs> oscillate and it changes the sound like Li Lionel Hampton how about if you demonstrate that? It's like a vibrato effect. Yeah. So Lionel Hampton, he would, vibes only came in one size. You either you had to have the motor totally off or you had to have it like full blast. And this is what it would sound like, full blast. So then they invented... The Rio stat, and it slowed down the motor. And then M Milt Jackson was the first one to, to use that slowed motor thing. And that, that made it a lot more enjoyable to that hear. That first one sounded like an a, a episode of Star Trek to me, you know? I'm sorry, I, I, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. It sounded like an episode of Star Trek, Oh, that first one. Yeah, it's been called a lot of things <laughs> in its day. It, it was called a metallophone before it was called a, actually it was called a vibraharp. And then it changed its name to vibraphone, but it depends on the, the model. Anyway, I think you've probably got more than what you asked for. History of the vibes. Anybody else in the moment have a burn-in question? You can ask one later, too, but I just thought I'd... Yes. 
the question. Uh, I think I will play one. It has a little wider range that I can use on a solo if I want, and it has a darker tone, so it depends on the song. Like, we are going to do a song that is a dark kind of song, and I play it on this. The, it's just a, a, and a different color, too. I like the different colors. So could you play the same note? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, go ahead, show it. Well, I, and I'm, I'm going to do a song like, like that, too, so you'll be able to hear more of it. They almost, in here they vibrate the same almost. But the sustain pedal makes quite sustain a difference. Off, you know, and you right. It's amazing in here. Yeah. Well, we're, we're going to actually uh, feature Jim all by himself on this next one, a new composition. If you want to say.
<clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, I, it, it occurred to me, um, make my real brief advertisement, that, that that is the title track from my first CD <laughs> that is available out in the lobby afterwards um, called Traveling. And I think um, as any, uh, what's the word, self-promoting um, musician these days, I think we all brought some CDs out there, so you can have a plethora of CDs if you're interested. Um, we're going to play just a couple more for you, and I think Jim wants to say something about this next one. But before he does, it's our one and only opportunity to get something out of this guy here. So Warren... What is that instrument you're playing on? <laughs> it's a really big violin. Well, um, it's a member of the family of violins. Uh, it's related to a gamba, which is a, an instrument made centuries ago. And it is a big violin. It's a big violin. But did, so, you, did you start out on the violin when you were a little boy? No, 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 no. I played um, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star on the piano. And a trumpet player, and a um, in fifth grade and in sixth grade I graduated to, to uh, you know uh, no alto horn and trumpet, and then I was in a rock band as a kid, as a teenager, and there was five guitar players in the rock band, <laughs> and so they looked at me and they said you're going to play the bass. So uh, you know 2995 Otto Stein Music in Albany, New York, there was a bass in my and I didn't take up this instrument until I saw a great jazz trio with uh, Kenny Burrell and a Phoenix uh, trio and the upright bass player. And I kept looking at this guy going, what the heck is that? <laughs> and so I went out and rented one and I learned to play it. And since I was a bass guitar player, this is kind of the same. It's a little, little different, obviously. You know, there's frets on most bass guitars, which is part of it. But if you play it, in tune, and you've got a decent ear, you can, you can play it in tune. Uh, and then uh, I've been playing it ever since, been playing it 40 some years. I went back and got a music degree in performance on the bass. Yeah, I was going to say, he makes it sound like he just figured it all out on his own, which, yeah. which is incredible, but I do know you went to music school. So I did, and I, yeah. you know, I had to do all the sawing and stuff like that. I'm not a <laughs> sawer anymore, I have too many shoulder injuries. I, you know, rotators and all that stuff. I get the bow out and after about three minutes I set it down and you know, can't do it. So I'm happy just to pluck. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. Any answers? Any answers? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. How do you transport either of these uh, big instruments? I have a case and so you put it in the case and then you walk around like this. Oh, I have a van. Yeah. yeah. But I used to have a pickup truck, and it rained on it a lot, so I had a base that was rained on all the time. So I got a van. I've been driving vans for 30 years. Do you have two vans? Two. <laughs> one for each? Uh, no, I only have one van for 30, over 30 years. I keep doing that. For uh, the last 30 years, I have had to disassemble this every time on a gig. Yeah, it folds up, but now that I have a, a van, I can put uh, two of these at, in the same time. So it just and I so that convinced me I need to get another van. I'm a, I'm a van guy from now on if I'm gonna because it's just too much to take this apart. I mean, I can't, probably 25,000 times I've done it. We have a question back here, I think, sir? Yes, sir. Is there any what was the last part? Uh, to this particular base, no. This base is a six-year-old base made in China. And it's called a Thompson, but it's a hybrid base. The top and the sides are solid spruce. Um, I'm sorry, just the top. And the sides and back are a laminate wood. It's all solid wood. I kept, I had an old 80-year-old uh, 
check base in Arizona, whenever I traveled east of the Mississippi, it would start, the seams would pop because the humidity would change. So I had an Arizona base for a while, and when I started to travel more, I decided <coughs> I needed a little newer, sturdier instrument. And, you know, I mean, these, this bass just sounds pretty good. So I, I, I'll figure it out. Thank you. The first time I heard of that was when I went to Colorado for graduate school, and it's a desert there. We we're eastern Colorado, and um, so all these people were, you know, students were coming in from all around the country, and there was a bass player from Oregon, and I, I believe it's probably even more humid in Oregon than, <laughs> than in Michigan. So he, it got so bad for his bass that he, it just totally came apart, and so he was going to be there for about three years. So. The first six months he was there, his base lived in a shop, uh, a base shop, where they just literally took it apart, let it get all dried out, and then they glued it all back together, and then he was fine again. But when he moved back to Oregon, he probably had to do the same thing all over again. But yeah, all the, all the students who came there with wood instruments were going nuts. They were just, so, anyway. All right, we're, we're going to play a beautiful piece by Antonio Carlos Jobim, and of course his most famous is Girl from Ipanema. But we're doing a very interesting one, and Jim said he found the translation of the lyrics, and so I don't know what they are. We're going to hear them now, I think. They're not X-rated or anything. Mm -hmm. They're not X-rated. <laughs> um, but anyway, if, uh, this song compared to the girl from Ipanema is like night, night and day, so I don't know. This will take just a minute. I thought you might be in interested in the words, even though we're not going to sing it, but trying the feeling of Joe Beam, his uh, depressive, fatalistic self, and I hope you don't get too bummed out, but when you hear the music, it'll help, I think, bring, bring you back. I, I already know the steps on this road. I know it will lead me nowhere. Your secrets I know by heart. I already know the stones along the way, and I also know that there alone I'm going to stay so much worse. Why can't I, what can I do against charm? This love that I deny so much, I avoid so much. And that, however, always returns me to bewitch me with your same old sad facts that in a portrait album that I insist on collecting, there I go again like a fool to search for the grievance that I'm so tired of knowing, new sad days, clear nights, Verses, letters, my face. I'm still writing to you again to tell you this is a sin. I bring the breast so marked from memories of the past, and you know the reason. I'll collect another sonnet, another black and white portrait to mistreat my heart. That's the worst of this song. It's not tall and tan. It's the same, the same guy, bro.
All right. Thank you. That's Rogers and Hart. Oh, well, I should ask you. Rogers and Hart. Spring is here. I hear. Yeah, spring is here. I hear. And uh, it's, it's like having a little hard time making up its mind, but we know it's just around the corner. And then right after that comes summer. You know, that's, that's in the words, though. That's the words of the song at the very end. Spring is here. I hear. Well, it's really a sad song. Oh, here we go. When you listen to the words. Let's not hear the words. <laughs> That's cool. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for, for coming. <laughs> My voice. So, and yes, usually I sing something, but no way. It's just, okay. <clears throat> Spring is here. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> so if you're not already on the mailing list and you want to be, put your name out there, drop your business card, something. Uh, we got some CDs. If anybody's interested in helping out, we can always use a little more help. We've got a committee, but people, it's all volunteers, so as you can imagine, people kind of come and go and different commitments and whatnot. So no, no strings attached if you want to just even come in and help with one concert without you know, signing up for the whole you know, next 10 years or something. We can always use a little more help with that. And also donations, of course, that's all helpful. And um, just in case, oh my gosh, do I have to say this? Jerry, do I have to say it? I guess I do. So <laughs> a week from tomorrow is the Musician of the Year Banquet at the Guest House. And if you don't know about it, please go and we'll have a good time and I'm the Musician of the Year. So anyway. <laughs> oh. um, and, I, and I just would like to also say, um, I, I see Scott back there and you know we hear his voice a lot in case you don't know the voice of Scott Vanderwerf on WGBU. You probably know the voice, but he's, give us a wave, Scott. Yeah, he, does, he does the jazz programming on WGBU. And, um, and, you're, and I'm interviewing tomorrow, is it? Yeah, so I'm going to be going in and, yeah, so we'll have a little interview tomorrow morning and we'll be talking about whatever. So uh, thank you for coming. And also I want to thank my mother for coming up from Florida, right here, Miss Theta Connell. Thank you, Jim Cooper and Warren Jones. Yes, and my and yes, a couple more thank yous to Connor Bardalis, who used to do all the sound and everything, but he's now um, helping today. But he is also now our program director at um, Fountain Street Church, so that's kind of cool. We've got new on board back here, Lauren. Is it Holt? Yeah, Lauren Holt doing sound today. So thank you, Lauren. She's our, it's our first concert with Lauren. Um, the music committee at Fountain Street Church, as I said, kind of fluctuates, but um, they're the ones who really. Uh, back me up with this. I'm, I'm kind of take the lead on it, but everybody pitches in and does different things. So thank you to the music committee and for the church itself for hosting uh, the concert. And, um, you know, everybody that just, uh, it's a little community here. I was interviewed by John Sinkovics on Friday, and we were talking about how um, jazz is not the most popular music out there. <laughs> but what I find is those who like it show up. They, it's a, it, I, I always refer to it as a a small, passionate niche. <laughs> and so thank you again for coming. I'll see you the next time. So I wanted to ask before we go, where are you guys playing? Because you might have some new fans here today. And uh, what's going on? So Warren, where are you playing? I play uh, <clears throat> Fridays and Saturdays and Mondays with the John Shea Trio. You can uh, Google John or Facebook John Shea Trio and you'll find the places and the times. Here in Grand Rapids, no, no it was on Saturday. And then um, I'm always available for weddings and bar mitzvahs. <laughs> <laughs> and Jim? Uh, if you want to go right from here, we're going down to the, uh, the Thai place, the new Thai house down in Douglas, Michigan. And I'm going to play piano for an hour down there. So that's like coming up. That's the, that's the, quick, that's the soonest gig that I have. <laughs> is right af after this. Is but like then we're... We are on, Robin and I are playing next Sunday at the Spring Lake Library with uh, uh, Tom Lockwood and myself and Robin. So that's uh, Jazz by the Fireplace, even though the fireplace won't be on, I hope. Yeah, and so, and, and you know, like everybody, we, we all have our website, so if you really want to know, you can look up our names and you'll find us, right? So. All right, well, thank you again. We're going to close out with, we went from spring, and we're going to close out with summer night.